All right, guys, welcome back. Today we have another ROM game in physical form, and this time we have an oldie but a goodie, one that's been around for quite a while. You may have heard of it, and that is Pokemon Brown version. And so just like last time, it actually came with this neat little custom case here, looking very, very official. Very, very nice artwork on here. Though, even though it might look official, just like last time, the Pokemon Company, Nintendo, and I think on the back here, the official Nintendo seal, it is not an official Pokemon game, uh, despite how amazing it might look. Uh, it is technically not an official Pokemon game, so don't be uh, bamboozled by that. All right, so I'll go ahead and flip this over so we can read what Pokemon Brown is all about. This still blows my mind here, but Pokemon Brown is a hack ROM of Pokemon Red created all the way back in 2004. That literally blows my mind. That doesn't even seem possible that that is as long ago as it is and that somebody was able to make a game like this. Uh, all the way back in 2004. Uh, but it was created by Cool Boy Man. I remember this. I, this is actually uh, probably the first ROM I had ever even heard of or ever played. I remember playing it on the computer uh, probably back in its first version. Because if we keep reading here, it talks a little bit about how uh, in 2009, uh, the remake there was a remake of the game that added uh, the decks to 224 Pokemon. And then I guess in 2014, there was a remake that added Sylveon. Uh, so these were not things I experienced way back in the day there. I think I experienced a much more, uh, generic Pokemon Brown. Um, and I am a little curious though. I do see it says, uh, 151 and then we get up to 224, maybe 225 with Sylveon, but I'm seeing like a Bidoof here and, you know, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, is, is a Bidoof actually going to be in this game? I don't know. I, I get they're going with the Brown theme here, but I'm questioning if Bidoof's actually going to be in this game, but we'll find out eventually. So I know I played this back in the day. I definitely didn't get very far in the game. I, I definitely didn't beat it. Uh, so I really don't know too much about this game. I'm sure with these versions, I've probably missed quite a bit. But from what I do remember and what it says right here, we do take place in the Rijon region. I, I hope I say that right, R-I-J-O-N, uh, which is a completely brand new region. That's one thing that's very unique and impresses me about this hack, especially being made in 2004. I mean, this is essentially from the ground up build, a completely new game, obviously using pre-existing Pokemon, but... I mean, this was such amazing work for something being back all the way back in 2004. That's insane. So aside from all of these other remakes that have been uh, sparse throughout the years here and adding Sylveon, I do see down at the very bottom here, one thing that drew me in and made me pick this game as the next game I wanted to talk about uh, was it includes five new elemental types. Now, I didn't do too much research into this game because I wanted it to be kind of fresh and fun for me for whenever I play it. So I don't technically know what those new elemental types are, but... Just off the top of my head, I want to say I'll probably see a wood type. I feel like that's a, a fan favorite type. I see people wanting to be added in the game all the time. I could maybe see a, a light type, but if they've got Sylveon, they've already got Fairy. So I, I'm curious to see what it's going to be. So I'll take one last good look here at this cover here, which I want to admire. I mean, just like the last one, this thing does look really good. Like I said, I do question if Bidoof's actually going to be in the game. Maybe he will. You know, it is Pokemon Brown. Uh, but the case, I mean, it just, it, it looks so official. I think my last one was a bit, thi a bit thicker uh, and, and clear, uh, but this one definitely looks to be a little bit more like a DS case, at least. Go ahead and pop it open now, and there we go. Pokemon Brown. No C3. Yeah, so last time it was a, definitely a clear case. So this obviously is not an actual DS case. This definitely does appear to, to fit an actual Game Boy Color game here. I'll go ahead and set this down real quick so we can take a look at this. So here we go. Pokemon Brown. We've got Eevee and then see, okay. So that's, uh, I can't remember his name. I'll definitely put him up there, but T Terracon or something like that. So Pokemon Brown, is he going to be in here? Is Bidoof going to be in here? I'm curious to see what all is added into this game. Uh, I am noticing though, this case, I don't actually have a gold, uh, to, to show it off to, but this does look very much so like a, uh, a gold case, not quite Brown, but, uh, I actually kind of half expected this thing to be just that generic kind of gray silver that a lot of Game Boy games come in. I've, I've seen pictures of it that way, at least. Best thing I can compare it to is Pokemon Special Pikachu Edition. Same shape, at least. Uh, not quite the same color, but like I said, I didn't have a gold growing up. But I still don't, so this is the best thing I'll be able to compare it to. Uh, so you can see the differences right there. So I'm pretty sure the inside of this is probably going to look just like the inside of... Uh, the crystal clear I made. It's probably going to be about the size of a Game Boy Advance game, going to be just smaller. It's uh, the type of circuit board, I guess, that they're able to work with here. 
All right, well, now that we had a little bit of a look at the game and the case here, we'll go ahead and slide this into the Game Boy and see what it's all about. Here we go, Pokemon Brown version. We got Pidgeot as the mascot here. Uh, and then we have a uh, Nassam art, I believe is what that is. I'm not 100% sure, but looks like I just saw Toted out of there. So we've got some Gen 2 in here for sure. Houndour in there. I'm loving the way this is looking so far. Let's go ahead and get in here. Okay, we've got Price. Price, maybe? Or maybe this is a different guy here. I'm not 100% sure. Well, we've got the Rajon region, okay. Timothy. All right, so he's not Price. We'll call him Tim, though. All right, fair enough, fair enough. All right, let's see. What system is this? Playing the SNES. All right, so they kept it up with the, the appropriate system here. So we've just moved to the Rajon region. Uh, good luck following your dad's footsteps, sweetie. Okay, all right. Go south for the professor. All right. Okay, so this is the starting town. This is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting. What is this place called? Seashore City. I like that. I think I think we're supposed to go south. I think that's what they said, but I just want to look up here real quick. People, hello. Are those new shoes? Try running with them by holding... Oh, can I do that? No way! Okay, so they give you running shoes. They did this in uh, the Crystal Clear as well, but just from the get-go, that's awesome. That's, that's really cool. There you are, you're late! All right, so is this, uh, is this the price guy? Timothy? Tim, yes, Tim, what's up? All right, so I'm actually very curious to see what the Pokemon starters are going to be. The case, which I'm going to assume again, like last time, not made by Cool Boy Man. I assume this is made by the seller I bought it from. So I don't know that those are going to be the starters. Pretty sure from the last time that I played this, which was a very long time ago, it was just the Kanto starters. But this game has clearly been updated a few times, so uh, we'll see here. All right, well, since it is the three Kanto starters, I think I am probably going to have to go with my favorite, which is Bulbasaur. I know not everybody's favorite is Bulbasaur. In fact, that's probably most people's least favorite, but call me a sucker. I love them. All right, first rival battle. Let's go... Let's check out our Pokemon. All right, Murrah wants to fight. I'm also noticing, I guess I don't get to change my rival's name. I guess he's just Murrah. It's interesting. All right. Let's hope I didn't make a mistake by choosing Bulbasaur. I'm loving the way this game is looking, by the way, just in terms of like the graphical performance. It's like a hybrid, I guess. It's like, this is not the way Bulbasaur would look in red version. He looks way better than he did in red version. But for the most part, like overworld sprites and stuff, it does seem to be very classic to red. It's like that 1.5, not quite Gen 2, but not quite Gen 1. It's very neat. Ruh, ruh, raggy, I'm about to lose this. <laughs> Oh, wow. I hope this isn't like a you-have-to-win battle. They usually aren't, right? Not these first ones. Yeah, my great or what? Yeah, I think I just lost. All right. That's okay. I'm sure there will be a number of uh, rival battles throughout this game. Before I go any further, I do want to note that this is part of the reason why we're here. We want to make sure that this game does save. That is part of the reason why I'm making this video. Does it save? Will the profile hold? Will it be here whenever I get on? Obviously, this says the old file will be erased, so we have to assume that there is going to be uh, luck with this save here. All right, so... Yes, okay, so the game does save mission accomplished. It does what it's supposed to do. If I'm not mistaken from what little I remember of this game, I think... There should be a city probably just right up here, and I'm pretty sure our first gym is there. And if I'm not 100% mistaken, I think it's water, so we should be pretty good uh, up, up against him. We didn't catch anybody in the the cave, unfortunately, and I, I don't know if there's going to be anybody out here, but I believe water is next. So, yeah, I don't really know what town this is. This is okay, well, here's the gym right here. Here's the gym, so... So, yeah, Merc so we were just in Merson Cave. So Merson City Gym Carp. Yeah, I remember Cartman. I kind of remember the name Cartman a little bit. I'm pretty sure he's water type. 
All right, checking out Cartman's gym here. We got at least one jabroni right up here. Stop right there, kid. This guy's not explaining that he's light years away or, or whatever the heck Brock's guy does in the beginning, but he is still a junior trainer with a squirtle. All right, so this absolutely all but confirms the water typing that we were talking about, Cartman and his water typing team here. I don't know. I'm just going to see what this gym's about. I do remember fighting him a little bit, but not really a lot. I don't really know what his team's going to be. I don't really know what to expect. I don't know how many trainers there are. Also, I did want to point out, I kind of meant to say this earlier, but I, I like how fast this game is. I, I like when you uh, load into a battle, whether it be wild or trainer, it's just it's instant. It's none of that lead-in, I guess. I don't know. And, of course, the running shoes, which made it immensely uh, easier to get through that long, albeit, but still very fun cave that we had earlier, that Mercer cave. Okay. So, okay, this is it. Is this it? This is it. So this must be the legendary Cartman here. All right. I'm Cartman. Yes. Okay. I train only water type Pokemon. Fire is useless against my mighty water attacks. Oh, oh, wait, oh, so, so Cicada. So I am saying, all right, let's see how good you really are. And Cartman follows up. Okay. But don't say I didn't warn you. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever actually had the, uh, uh, player talk like that before that's interesting but we got a horsey that's actually interesting i just caught a shiny horsey in uh pokemon go the other day oh vaporeon okay that's interesting interesting i'm liking this team lineup it's very unique we've got a brock clone named carpman with a vaporeon and oh sand attack uh and a horsey shout out horsey but I don't even know who's next on Jim, honestly. I, I think I only ever fought Carpman whenever I played this way back in the day. But we defeated Carpman, though. That's all that really matters. Damn. Wow. Okay. Damn, he says. Carpman says, damn, you beat my Pokemon. All right. Proof that this is not an official Pokemon game. They would not use such colorful language in a Nintendo official Pokemon game here. All right, since we took on that first gym now, I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to when I have hopefully, fingers crossed, beaten the game, since that is part of the reason why we are making this video, to kind of show that this game at least can be beaten, you know, can save and all of that good stuff. So to help better gauge this product and everything, I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip ahead to when I've gotten a little bit further into this game. All right, guys, we are back. You can go ahead and uncross those fingers. Uh, we are here at the Ridgeon League or the, the Rijon League. Um, we have successfully beat the Elite Four, and I have also gone through some of the game's uh, post-game content as well, just to go ahead and explore a little bit uh, to see what this game has to offer. I'll go ahead and pull up the Pokemon League here just to kind of show you and confirm that I have, in fact, gone through the Elite Four and beaten them. Uh, I believe, technically, I've gone through them twice here. I just want to go ahead and show off my team here. First and foremost, this is a pretty fun team here. Uh, so... Go ahead and start off here. We'll start. We'll start with uh, Sylveon here. So we obviously weren't a hundred percent sure, or at least I wasn't, if, if Sylveon was even going to be in my version of the game. Uh, so I wanted to confirm that Sylveon was in the game, and sure enough, my favorite fairy type is. Uh, next, if you probably saw, we have Gliscor as well. So I don't know if I already talked about it or not, but uh, they obviously added some of these extended evolutions into this game from uh, Gen Four which is a huge, uh, huge heavy play by them. I was uh, very impressed by that. So I had to I had to get somebody of that nature. I was leaning more towards Honchko or Miss Magius, but Gliscor was the route that I went here. Gotta love him. He came in pretty clutch with the uh, Earthquake, if I'm being honest. All right, so we do have a few things, of course, that I want to talk about. But first and foremost, since we're already here at the Ridge Only, we'll go ahead and talk about the Elite Four here. Uh, so obviously this looks like Lorelei, and we had talked earlier with, I think, Cartman, the first gym looking like Brock. So we do see a lot of reused sprites here, which personally really doesn't bother me too much. Uh, we also saw their uh, new sprites that they added in when they had to, I guess, add in Gliscor and all those Gen 4 evolutions. You know, they looked pretty good. And Sylveon, of course, as well. So all the new sprites that they added looked very well. And oddly enough, her name is Red. Uh, and if you don't remember Lorelei or AK Red, uh, normally uses ice type Pokemon. And in here, uh, they're actually using fire type. So the entire Elite Four, while using the same sprites, uh, they do use different teams, except for Lance. He is uh, still dragon type in this game. And of course, you've got your rival being the champion at the end here. 
But yeah, so all the teams do switch up here. And my biggest complaint about this is if you saw earlier, we were standing in basically a hallway, a uh, little bit of a design choice, I, I, I say, uh, not trying to harsh on the game too much, but I thought it was a little strange that all of the Elite Four members were just basically in a hallway rather than a room, uh, but not the champion, of course. Uh, just a little note, just wanted to point that out. So I had also mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video about the addition of five new types into this game. And now that I've beaten the game, I can confirm that they are wood, gas, wind, abnormal, and sound. Um, and as cool as they were and as excited as I was to actually utilize those, they really were not that prevalent in the game. Uh, right here, you can see I've got noise pulse, which is a sound type move on my glide score here. So obviously there are some new moves, of course, uh, that were added in with the types, as well as some of the Pokemon changing their previous types to reflect the new types. Um, but none of the gym leaders or, or the Elite Four for that matter, none of them actually utilize the type as their prime way of fighting. So there was no wood gym, there was no grass or sorry, gas gym. None of that really existed. Uh, it was mainly just a few of the Pokemon as well as some of the moves uh, being reflected with the new change. So another thing that you might have just noticed up in the corner there, we do like to go ahead and point out everything that we notice in the game here. But certain moves right up here in the corner here, see that little glitch right there? At first, I thought maybe that was intentional. I first noticed it, I think, on Confusion. But I've noticed that pretty much any move that pulses the screen like that will, will cause the, the name to reflect and glitch up in the corner right there. Uh, obviously, I wanted to point that out. I don't know that that was intentional. I thought maybe it was at first. Uh, but once I started to see it on more than one move and it just it never it never didn't do it. Uh, I thought maybe, maybe that wasn't intentional. Maybe it was a, a little bit of a glitch that perhaps happens just on the console or sorry, on the physical cartridge. Uh, I've not played enough of the ROM to confirm if that happens anywhere else, but I did want to point that out. So while this game does look and feel like an actual genuine old school, authentic Pokemon game, there are a few moments in this game that kind of had me scratching my head, I guess you could say design-wise. Uh, for example, we're here in a forest here, uh, and there's just this set of staircases right here uh, that leads me to this little underground area here. And if we keep walking through this little empty area here, we will take us out uh, to a new little route over here. Uh, so there were just a few head scratchy uh, connection areas, I guess you could say. These little connector areas from route to route or city to city there were a few moments like that that were just like why why is it a cave why is it a, a little house you know just a few of those moments that just seemed a little out of place i guess you could say and speaking of things being out of place here we have another great example uh we have a gym here i believe this is what blaine's gym was i i don't remember his name it is joe we have got joe here uh so yeah this is just a gym literally in the middle of a forest uh, it takes a, a little bit of navigating to get here, but you 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 do have to actually go through a forest to get here. There are no other buildings around. Uh, it's just this this gym out here in the middle of nowhere, no city around it to, to call its home. A little strange, uh, albeit kind of neat, I suppose, to have just this solo gym in the middle of a forest, but a little strange, I guess. Go ahead and show off another little neat feature that they have, something that they usually have something similar to this in pretty much every ROM hack game, uh, but it's something nice to know that they have. We have the trade stone here, so any Pokemon that requires the trade evolution that you normally couldn't do in these ROM hack games, they have added the nice uh, trade stone item to go ahead and get you that evolution anyways. Uh, so yeah, we'll just evolve Haunter here into Ghastly, or so sorry, Gengar, not Ghastly. So yeah, they, they've got, uh, I think I ran probably into like four or five of those trade stones just playing the game as it is. I wasn't trying to look for them or anything, and I, I came across several of them. So you definitely don't have to worry about getting one over the other. There should be plenty to go around for all of your Pokemon. So another thing that I thought was pretty neat about this game is the inclusion of part of the Johto region. Uh, if you couldn't tell here, I'm actually in Alzelia Town from the Johto region in the Gen 2 games, which is pretty cool. Uh, I believe the in-game reason for why uh, a lot of this is blocked off, because... Uh, they don't actually include the entire Johto region in this game, but uh, they do include Azalea Town and uh, Ilex Forest as well. But I think an earthquake is what they say is the reason why you, you can't keep going further than that. Uh, but it is, it's a neat little inclusion, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, you obviously get to go in here. 
you can battle. This doesn't count towards your Ridge Zone League, uh, but you can actually go through and fight the uh, Zelia Town Gym Leader, which is Bugsy here. I haven't actually done it yet. I'll go ahead and click on him now. Hello, he says. I am Bugsy. But the inclusions of the other games, of course, Johto, Gen 4 games, all of that is spectacular in its own right. You know, you don't have everything available to you, but you have a, a good, I guess, mixture of the things available to you in this game, uh, which makes it for a pretty unique game. You know, you don't quite have 250 Pokemon, so you don't have all of Johto in there, but you have like, I guess, like the the selects, the good Johto Pokemon. You got Houndour and things like that in here, Heracross, of course. You got the good ones in here. So before we go ahead and turn this off here, there are a few other things I want to talk about real quick. Uh, this isn't, of course, a straight-up review of the Pokemon Brown game itself, but I do want to point out a few things that I noticed. Uh, the story was a little lacking, I guess you could say. There, From what I could tell, really wasn't much of a story. Um, there was just a weird inclusion of Team Rocket that was just kind of, oh, we're here and now we're gone super super fast and giovanni had the exact same role you know he was a a, a gym leader in this region and then he, he gives up and there was a weird side quest of power struggle with team rocket in there with some other weird patroller i don't really 100 percent know that i could follow a cohesive story in this game that being said uh the Pokemon stories aren't necessarily always the strongest thing. It's really just the actual physical game that we're, we're really gunning for here. And I do think this game looks and feels like an actual Pokemon game. It, it, it's honestly amazing. There are a few, of course, overworld design choices with connector routes that I thought were maybe a little weird. But you had some awesome elements, too. Of course, the inclusion of all of the extender evolutions from Gen 4 and Sylveon and the fairy type and the running shoes and... All of that, and of course, uh, Azalea Town with Bugsy, all of that inclusion was was really, really neat. But there were just a few moments that were maybe leaving me scratching my head a little bit. All right, now that we've finally played through and beaten Pokemon Brown, I'll go ahead and address the elephant in the room. That would be Bidoof right here. And then of course, we have Terracon, I believe, right here. They are, in fact, not in the game. I have now beaten the game, and I have done a little bit of research myself. And if I'm not mistaken, Terracon and Bidoof are not actually a part of the Pokedex for the Origone, at least not in Pokemon Brown, from what I could tell. I think that that was possibly just an oversight on whoever created the case and physical game here. Uh, like I had mentioned before, I don't believe Cool Boy Man, the creator of this game here, I don't believe that he was the one who actually had uh, any say in this uh, physical uh, copy here. I'm pretty sure he was not the one to make it. Somebody else, I believe the seller who I bought it from, was probably the one to make it. Um, like I said, I think just maybe a bit of an oversight. So don't let this judge uh, the thoughts you had on Pokemon Brown. So we did find out that we are able to, in fact, save this game and beat this game, at least by my standards, which is, of course, just going through the Pokemon League, collecting the eight gym badges, beating the Elite Four really just going through the story or what kind of story the game has to offer. We were able to do all of that. Uh, that was the primary thing we were testing to see if this physical cartridge would in fact work, as well as check out this neat little case here, albeit maybe a bit misin misinformed, I guess you could say, uh, but still looks absolutely amazing. And the game does play. It, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. So I definitely do recommend picking up your copy of Pokemon Brown whether it be physical or if you just want to download the ROM, which I would probably recommend first. You want to make sure you like the game. Do your research. I'm just here to tell you that this physical copy that I bought did in fact work. I know that is a big issue with a lot of these ROM games. Sometimes they don't work. Sometimes they crap out. Uh, we, we looked to see if it's safe. We looked to see if we could beat it and if there were any glitches, of course. And ultimately, I think this was a great success. If you guys did happen to enjoy this video, uh, feel free to leave a like or comment down below. Uh, all of that is greatly appreciated. Uh, and hopefully I will see you guys soon. I do plan on doing more videos like these. I plan on getting my hands on more of these physical games to see if the outcome is the same, if they do work, if they are trustworthy. Uh, so without further ado, guys, thanks for clicking on the video and I hope to see you guys soon.